I'm excited about this motor for a couple reasons. It's casing small enough, we can replace the you know, 112 horsepower. We don't have to worry about the really small motors, it'll fit. Um, and it's an ECM motor, so uh, it can actually go, has a much uh, bigger range of horsepower that it can put on the lower side. Um, we have tried to put bigger motors in a few times on the really small ones and created problems um, and had to do factory so we don't have to, it's nice. The other thing is its simplicity. This is the main reason that we got this. It's just simple. We can have one motor for both the 1075 and 825. So both motors right there. You'll just need to have two motors on your van and you'll have everything you need. The best part about it is how easy it is to put in. We have really long wires, making it all the way back to wherever we need to go. So that's super nice. Um, and then on the motor, the instructions are actually just tagged onto the wires. So pretty hard to miss, hard to mess up, which is the other reason that we're going for this motor. So you have on here, if it's a 1075 application, then uh, you just have these two wires. We don't have a capacitor. This will go onto the defrost board, um, relay or this it doesn't matter it just needs to be hooked up to the 240 top of the contactor if you don't have the defrost otherwise one side of the contactor and then a defrost relay and the board just needs 240 and when the contactor pulls in it's going to come on so all three of them if it's 1075 and it's listed right here so it says on this tag connect yellow and black for 1075 RPM. Disconnect for the 825. So then you just pull yellow off, which I'm gonna need pliers for, because they're really good <coughs> connections. You pull yellow off, and then you have 825. And only yellow goes both. No, 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 so just the black and purple at that point. So yellow off, disconnected. The one that has the tag that says disconnect for 825 stays disconnected. And you can cap that, put some tape on it. It's got a plastic bead, but let's not just leave it hanging and then strap it somewhere. Um, if you need the opposite rotation, then you unplug this. And again, that's a tag on here too. Uh, connect purple for a counterclockwise, disconnect for clockwise. So, and it's all right there inside the cabinet. You hook the whole thing up and you can change it right there. No more ugly straps and having to open back up to make changes. Um, again, pay attention to the depth of your blade. Um, an easy way to do that is to set this next to the other motor. The base is always gonna be the same, right? This bolts into the same uh, bottom point, but the other motor may be deeper or shallower, and so then you can line up exactly how far off of that other motor does my blade go. That's an easy way. Um, rule of thumb for actually inside the shroud is a half inch into the shroud. The top of your blade, condenser fan blade, a half inch into the shroud. So you see the shroud kind of comes down like this. If it's curved, some of them are straight. But at that middle point of that shroud, you want the top of your blade just a half inch over that. Uh, so that's the rule of thumb for that. It's, if you have a factory motor in there, just line it up. That's the easiest thing. Can I ask some questions? Yes. So one question is, do we need to seal this if we're not, if we don't have some sort of conduit running around it? Do we know? I don't know. We should find out because it looks like water may be, yeah, because I can actually see winding in there. Mm. So we may need to make sure that this is sealed um, with silicone or something. So that's that's something yeah. we need to know. That'd be good. And then um, you talked about the weep hole removal. I didn't. It's, okay. it's always out. It's always these. out. Okay, yeah, good. which is excellent. Um, what do you guys do? <clears throat> Let's say you have acorn nuts on the top of this holding it. What do you do in order to trim this back so that way the acorn nut fits on and actually holds it in the right spot? Do you have any strategy there? I'll, like when you have a cap on top and you mm -hmm. want to put the cap back, you don't want these just sitting straight up. What I do is um, cut them with my linemen and then file it so that it can 
go back on them. Yeah. To try so they don't shred it up. Th that works as long as you're good at it. And yeah. then you've got to make sure that yeah, you actually you actually get it at the right depth. Um, and I don't know if this one comes with, yeah, it does. Okay, good. So what I would typically do, so some guys would just use the, these extra little little nuts that come with it and then abandon the uh, acorn nuts. I don't like doing that because the acorn nuts still have that nicer capped look on top. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is run these on, okay, then trim it to length, then run these back off. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, kind of cleans the threads for you. So that way now you don't have to pull the file out. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're basically just using this to kind of help re-tap the threads onto the, onto the stud. Some of you are looking at me like I have three heads and one of them's on fire. <laughs> Follow what I'm saying? So you, you still have to get this height right, but this just allows you to kind of clean the threads as you pull it back. Before off. you cut it, if you have the bolt on there, it'll, it'll clean them up as it comes up. So Most important thing with all motors that only, you know, that have a flat on them, it, even if you have a blade that has two, so say, say you, you've got a blade that's actually got two set screws on it, you don't see that often, except on universal blades, you will find that sometimes. Um, you only tighten down on the flat. So even if you've got two screws, you only tighten the scr screw down that's on the flat part of the, of the shaft. Leave the other one out. Yeah, just leave the other one out. Does that make sense? And this is a good thing in general, Whenever, and this is more for blowers, but anytime you, you have anything where water can run into a motor, um, you want to kind of run a drip loop like that. Now again, if we have conduit around it, then it's fine. But anytime there's something like this, even on a blower, you want a drip loop. So if there's condensation, it drips off here and doesn't run straight in. Make sense? The other thing I wanted to mention, did you talk about the grounding? No, I didn't. Okay. So when do you have to connect this ground? If it's a plastic housing. What's that? If it's a plastic housing. If it's a plastic housing, right. If you have a non-conductive housing, because again, all this is conductive. So if this is attached to metal, 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 all the way around, then this doesn't really serve a purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I'm assuming that's the case and we should double check, we need to double check the manufacturer on this, that everything is internally properly grounded. Uh, but generally speaking, when you have a metal top, everything's metal, you don't need this ground. And that's why, again, the, the factory doesn't have one of these. If the factory doesn't have one of these, then you probably don't need to have this. But in case it's plastic tops, some pool heaters, uh, will be that way and that's that's a case mm -hmm. now another thing to mention is this motor because it goes up to third horse <clears throat> is going to be able to replace almost everything okay almost everything we currently have unless the physical because this does not have this these are the studs right there's no additional unless the physical size is so much smaller that you literally can't make this fit that would be a case or you're going to run into some pool heaters that have half, half horsepower motors right and if it's a half horsepower did you already mention that no if it's a half horsepower motor, obviously that's not going to work. So I'm mentioning this because if you get into the habit of this is the solution to all problems and you put this in on a pool heater, it's not going to work. But one that has a half horsepower motor on it. Mm. Because pool heaters tend to have heavily pitched blades. A lot of pool heaters are essentially six ton air conditioners. Mm -hmm. um, they're essentially maxing out as much as they possibly can on a residential um, electrical circuit. So no capacitors, easy hookups, kind of hard to get wrong. Uh, I'm going to say the same thing about the AMRAD capacitors. Pay attention to your instructions and then actually uh, watch the videos that go along with this. Brian himself has a great video. Um, if you want to see Brian in the early days looking incredibly nervous to even be making a video, a video with poor audio and video quality, watch, <laughs> watch his AMRAD. Uh, video for lots of reasons. He sells. He really sells the product, um, but he also installs it and, and talks through installing. It. And we have one right out there, thanks to Brian, in his video. Um, so everybody, pull it out and scan the QR code because this is the new instruction location. One thing that is different from the time that I originally posted it was the CPT terminal. Yes, it is. The CPT terminal is a very interesting thing. It only applies if you have a hard start. Mm -hmm. so yeah, just remember that. Yep. Well, so let's go ahead and start with that. Then. Are we get this one? New feature. I would like to. We'll see. Yeah. CPT terminal. If you have a hard start, then uh, if the hard start instead of hooking up. Um, to your arm. No, no, you still hook up to your herm, and then the other side goes to the CPT instead of common. Oh. On the hard start. So. 
And, and it, it has thorough instructions on that too. Uh, if you look at these instructions, go ahead and select the 200X because that's the one you guys all have in your hand. Uh, and they have a note in there about the C note one for CPT down at the bottom in red. And then in their uh, videos, very easy to follow, um, 3D and also somebody putting it in a unit so you can see with that. But it's, it's great because what it does is if um, there is a failure in your hard start relay, so the hard starts not dropping out like it's supposed to, it's staying in the circuit, mm -hmm. then it will actually just blow the fuse that's in here. Mm -hmm. And then the hard start will not be allowed in the circuit. And so your compressor will not be destroyed in that event. How would you test it in order that this failed? Is it like a con you do a continuity test or something? Between here and common, if you don't have, yeah, continuity, you'd want to do this power off. But if you didn't have continuity between common and your CPT, then that would be, yeah, the okay. fuse is blown in between the two. Okay, it's actually not what you said, though. What, um, it doesn't actually do what you just said. What it does is, in the case that the, in the case that the run capacitor fails, it prevents the hard start from being in the circuit anymore. Because what happens if you have a hard start, this is one of the big problems with the hard start. If you have a hard start, you know, run caps fail quite often, right? Mm -hmm. If the run cap fails, then the hard start's gonna keep trying to start the compressor. Oh. And then as soon as the hard start comes out, the compressor's gonna stall, and it's gonna keep doing that, doing that, doing that until the compressor fails. That would have been cool if it was the other way. Well, yeah. but it's, it's not. I like the look at it. One of the best things about this product is that they do have all their stuff on the box and in the instructions and literally written on the side of your capacitor. Yeah, there is. Um, let's continue to use our metal strapping. Never mind. <laughs> you can hold it in place with that if you like, but the metal strapping is just a lot better. And, I, and these are heavy. It can be pretty tight. You can, it'll fit in pretty much every single unit right in the slot slits slightly towards the contactor, potentially. Um, it, it can be pretty tight. Um, it's good touch metal to metal, you're fine. And I have noticed if you use the strap, it, it hangs, the weight of it just pulls the strap sideways a little bit. And then, you're, and then the ends are facing towards the side of that really tight. They're making it, manufacturing it so that it can go into equipment. Because they don't, they, they want their ca capacitors going in. So like it, it does fit. Like they've done their homework. Like it's going to be tight. It is going to be every once in a while. Tight, but years. they want their capacitors going in, so they're not going to make it to a, a, a point where it doesn't. Well, every every once in a while, you'll have. Uh, I mean, was important. <clears throat> oh, you're talking about the strap? <laughs> yeah, like the strapping. So you got the plumber strap. Every once in a while, you will have a model. Where you'll have to move something around to get it. But again, a big one you're holding in your hand, you almost never are going to have yeah. to use that. I mean, that's essentially only if it's an 80 microfarad. Um, it, it can go because again, it's it's additive on the ones on the small ones. So, like for example, you can connect a 25 together with a 20 and get 45 out of it. Mm -hmm. So, how often? And, and if you add in, uh, this is up to 65. to 65. So it's yeah. only it's going to be our 70, 75, and 80 that you would need this for, which they still exist. Uh, but it's going to be pretty rare. And so you're going to have one of these and then a couple of your common ones and a couple of the smaller ones. Okay, so let's walk through this. Uh, I did notice in the instructions, they tell you to uh, attach your perm terminal um, and then they tell you to attach the other compressor wire to common. But that's not the setup of most of our systems. The one that goes on common is just the, the common coming from the contactor, even though it's the same side as the run of our compressor, the other compressor wire. I just noticed that in the instructions, if you read to connect perm and then the other side of the compressor to common, but the other side of that compressor is our perm, is our run, and it's connected back into the contactor. And then use the same wire from the other capacitor that's common to this one's common. So this is exactly like replacing any other capacitor. You just have options for changing. The commons are always gonna be on the common in the middle. Everything that was on common will go back to the common. 
Um, and then the outside will be your different uh, options where you'll need the jumpers. Um, I want everyone, all of our residential service techs, to take the, the smaller normal size and either install it at your own house or install it at a family member's house if you don't have your own house. Um, I would like you to prioritize that. If you cannot uh, do that, then you just need to pay attention. But I want you to do that before you actually get to a client's house and do it the first time. All right, so jumpers. So first thing, um, let's do our um, compressor first. The, the instructions here is an example instruction on yours for 60 by 10. So let's just walk through the instructions and do that. Uh, make note of the capacitor beforehand. Good instructions. Uh, to achieve the 60, we're gonna, uh, for the compressor, we're gonna tie our compressor into the 50. So in order to have 60, we're gonna need to combine our 50 with what? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> you guys are really good at math. So it's just counting. Now we have a 60 microfarad capacitor with this jumper from 50 to 60. Does that make sense? Excellent. So if we check from common to our terminal, we're going to have a 60. Now, where does the compressor hook up? Because we have two of them tied together. Where's our compressor arm? It's not either. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you follow through the instructions, you put it on the highest microfarad terminal uh, in in any of the jumpers that you've put together. You put the your motor or your compressor, uh, your fan or your compressor always goes on the highest microfarad terminal. Yeah, basically you would have all of the current going through the smaller one and then into the bigger one. You have, yeah. It's just going to be much healthier for your capacitor. Um, and then um, now we need a 10 five plus for, five. for our uh, fan. Just get our jumper out. Look at that. A five and a five right there. Now, which one does the fan go on? Either cut on the specifically six. the left one. The largest five. Yeah. There's two sizes of five. Yeah. They are two. Okay, so now we have our brown fan, our blue herm on our carrier system on 50. What else do we need? Common. Common. And if the fan common also hooked up to the common before, we'll, we'll go ahead and put it on here. On common. But this is your run side. The common is your run side of both motors, not the common side of the motors, because now the motors have another common. Uh, wire coming back, the black one. I don't think we're talking about a carrier. That wire coming back is called the common from the motor. Because it's the common wire to the two uh, windings inside the motor. Right? But run is actually hooked up to common. So from your old capacitor, commons go onto the common in the middle. Do your math, hook up your motors to the higher, the higher microfarad side, and you're done. What if you have a hard start kit? If you have a hard start kit um, <laughs> that has been installed in the system, then let's hook up the one side to perm, which will be on the 50 in this example, the other side of the hard start to our CPT. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, HVACRschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community, Vortex by Tex.